Howdy folks, you're watching News and Guns, and today I'm located in East Tennessee in the Smoky Mountains. Actually, I'm right outside the Smoky Mountains in Sevierville, which is also the home of Dolly Parton and Dollywood. So, nice fun activities for all the family. But I happen to be here just on vacation, and there happens to be a really good deal at the Smoky Mountains Knife and Gun Works, which is what I'm parked at right now, and they have a really good deal on 1911s. Surprisingly, I do not own a 1911. No, I'll take that back. I'll take that back. I do own a 1911 styled pistol. It was intended for a German, the German army during World War II. So it was chambered in 9mm, not 45 ACP. So I've never owned a 1911 chambered in 45 ACP, basically a USGI version. So I'm probably going to pick one up today. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you guys across the United States and across the world what the process is to buy a firearm in Tennessee, one of the freest states in the Union as far as firearms are concerned. So let's go ahead and take a look. So what are the exact steps of picking out a firearm and purchasing in Tennessee? Well, let me tell you, first of all, you're going to go into a gun shop and you're going to go up to the display case. There'll usually be someone working behind there like in a bar or a jewelry store or something of that nature. You'll flag them down and you'll point to or tell them what you're interested in looking at. Now, if you're in a reputable store, they will open up the case. It'll be locked. All the cases are going to be locked, of course, because there are firearms in them. And they're going to open up for you and they're going to take out the firearm and they're going to rack it open, they're going to lock it open and show you and show to themselves that it is clear that there's no ammo on the case or in the firearm. And then they will hand it to you completely opened up like that. At that point, what you want to do is take a look at it. You want to drop the mag, take a look at the mag, just, you know, just kind of familiarize yourself with the firearm itself. And then you want to go ahead and drop the slide. Now, at this point, it's good etiquette to ask the person behind the counter, do you mind if I dry fire this firearm? Normally, they're going to say yes, unless it's a rim fire, unless it's a 22 or a 17 HMR, because sometimes that will damage the face of the, of the chamber. So you don't want to damage anything while you're looking at it, because you're not going to buy something damaged, and you shouldn't damage someone else's property. So, but ask them first, you know, do you mind if I dry fire this? 99% of the time, they're going to say, yes, please go ahead. Because that's the only way you can feel how good the trigger is or bad the trigger is. And you're going to feel it. You're going to point this either, either point it up or point it down. Do not point this at anyone. Yes, the salesperson knows it's empty. You know it's empty. It's still, it's rude, really. It, it's bad etiquette to point even an unloaded firearm at anyone. So you're going to point it maybe behind over, over the person's shoulder, anything but at a person. And you're going to you're going to take a look at it, look at the sight picture, see if it fits good in your hand because everyone's hands are different. That's why they make a bunch of different types of firearms because not two, no one is completely the same. And you might dry fire it a few times, see how it feels to you, rack it a few times. And then once you're done, you're going to rack it open and you're going to hand it back to it while open, hand it back to the salesperson. In which case they're going to check it, of course. And then of course, put it back into the counter and close it up. At that point, you have to say, you have to decide, do you want to purchase that firearm or not? Um, usually, it's, <laughs> this is not required, but stay cool, you know? You wanna stay cool, you don't wanna be like, I want one in purple. No, you don't wanna do that. You wanna be like, you know, I, I like that. I think, I'll, I think I'll take one, I think I'll take one. And if it's a new firearm such as the 1911 I purchased, then they're gonna go in the back and they're gonna bring this out and they're going to show you the they're going to open this up and display it to you the actual one you're going to buy and you get to take it out and take a look at it now this one this 1911 this is the one i purchased just just earlier today and it's still in the bag it's still completely sealed up i did not even take it out of the bag because now normally you should normally take it out of the bag make sure it's exactly what you want but i didn't because i want a whole unveiling on camera later on i will be doing a video review of this later on so stay tuned for that but in order to purchase this i had to do a background check every state in the union you have to do a background check to purchase a new firearm fill this up before yep mm -hmm. right. just make sure everything matches and my little pet peeve I'm make your sign date to stop okay i'll be right back up all right thank you and the reason they want your approval of which firearm you want is because they put that serial number of this particular firearm on your background check form and they fill that out for you and then you fill out the part that's the background check part the you know your name your address uh let's see where you were born whether you're a citizen or not uh, all the distinguishing 
characteristics of whether you can have a firearm or not. You know, are you mentally deficient? Um, have you, are you a fugitive from justice? All that, all that good stuff that you have to answer because you should have to answer that. And they're going to, you're going to fill that out, give it to them, and they're going to run a background check. In Tennessee, that costs you $10. Now, some states cost more, some states it's free, but in Tennessee, it's a $10 check to make sure you can have a firearm and you pay for that yourself. We're now running a background check, so that should take about uh, 5, 10, 15 minutes maybe. So I'm gonna walk around and just peruse the rest of the store. Five, 10 minutes later, my background check is completely cleared because I have I've been through the background check so many times. I'm on so many lists as far as firearm purchasing goes, but I have my federal firearms license for Cura Relic, and I also have a concealed carry permit license. So I sell through the background check in no time flat. Alrighty folks, as simple as that. About a half hour of work and uh, pay my money, did my background check, and I got myself a pistol. So I'm looking forward to uh, taking this out and going to the range. Now, as far as pistols are concerned, you have to be at least 18 years of age but all the other background checks are the same. The same background check is good for pistols, AK-47s, AR-15s, just the AR-15 lower, just the lower itself, because that's the firearm. That's what the ATF considers a firearm. You have to do the background check for that. And the same background check is for shotguns. Now, rifles and shotguns, you can be any age whatsoever and possess them as far as pistols go you have to be at least 18 years of age and as with everything else the age limits for ownership is also state specific and remember if you can pass a background check but you know someone who can't or they believe they can't pass a background check and you purchase a firearm for them you've committed a felony you have committed a crime that will get you into prison because that is called a straw purchase if they give you money you go in you pass a background check they give you the firearm from the gun show or the gun store you walk out and you hand that firearm over to your friend who may or may not be able to pass a background check, then you have committed a crime and you can go to prison for that. And remember, there are many, many laws regarding firearm purchasing and ownership in every single state that are different. There are very state specific laws out there. So make sure if you have questions, go ahead and go to a gun store and ask the people that work there. They want that they want you to have a good experience. They want you to have a good experience with firearm ownership. And if, if they can make a sale out of it, that's great. But they do want to have want, want you to have a positive experience. So if you have questions, go ahead and call a gun store, go down there in person, take a look at them. Maybe even take a uh, firearm safety class, ask all your questions there. That's always a really good idea. Almost every single gun shop out there will be able to either get you in touch with someone or they do their own firearm safety courses. Now, what's interesting is that I cannot purchase a firearm outside of the state of Tennessee. No one can purchase a firearm outside of their home state. I mean, you can in a way, but there are some guidelines you have to follow. So for instance, I'm in Tennessee. I can drive down to Georgia, which is a state that borders Tennessee if you're not geographically inclined. Uh, I can drive down to Georgia and I can go to a gun store in Georgia, purchase a firearm. I pick out a firearm, I give them my money, and then they do not hand me my firearm. Unfortunately, even though I own the firearm, they cannot, they cannot hand it over to me. They have to send it to a gun store in Tennessee. So I'll give them the name of a local gun store that's in my area, and they will ship it straight from their store to, to the store that I want in Tennessee. So they transfer it there, and then I go to that, so I have to go home. <laughs> I have to go back to Tennessee and then go to that gun store, and then they will do the background check in Tennessee, make sure that I'm on a nice list and not a naughty list, and then once I pass the background check, then they can hand me, they can transfer me my own firearm. Now, in many states, this does not apply for certain situations, such as uh, black powder, firearms, antique firearms, uh, air rifles, air pistols, or if you have your Curio Relic license, you can have you can have that and get some military surplus rifles or pistols sent to you across state lines. But for the most part, they're gonna have to ship it to a FFL dealer in your area inside your own state. Now, I've only lived in Tennessee, so I don't know what it's like to purchase a firearm outside of the state of Tennessee. So go ahead and leave your comments. If you purchase a firearm in another state besides Tennessee, let me know what that process was like because every single state is a little bit different and some states are drastically different. I'm looking to California and New York. There is very drastic little changes and uh, rules in some of those states. So let me know uh, what kind of rules and regulations or loopholes you had to jump through in the comments below the video. 
Well, guys, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like and go up, subscribe. A lot more is on the way. And if you have any comments, questions, or show ideas, leave that in the comment box below the video. And of course, you guys have a great day. See ya.